or full source code, visit ykksoftware.blogspot.com. Database Programming Part 2 In our next step, we're going to modify the Data1 Application Delegate. Go to database1applicationdelegate.h and then import for fmdatabase.h. We're going to need to add a few fields. Add an MS Mutable Array called Array Database that will hold all the rows in our database. We'll then type and define two strings. One that will hold the database name and the other that will hold the database path. After that we need an object to reference the database. It will we'll define an FM database object. Add a property to the, de to the array we created. We need to access the array from outside the app application delegate from other classes. That's why we need to add a property. Okay, go to database one app delegate dot implementation. We're gonna now add three new functions to this file. The first function is called update names and its goal is to update the string variables we'll defi we defined earlier for the database name and the database path. The database name we already know. We're gonna write it to be the database we copied earlier in the resources group. The database path we need to reference the documents folder in our application. The documents folder, to access the documents folder we, we're gonna initialize an array we're going to use a function called nssearchpath for directories in domain, which returns an array. Let's get a parameter as the directory you want to retrieve. In this case, it's the document directory. For the next parameter, we'll send nsuser domain mask and yes. The documents fo folder is contained in the, in the above array in object number 0. So we'll define a string and initialize it with the array object at index 0. This will hold the document path. But we're not finished. We need to append this, the database name to that string to get the full path to our database. We need the database to be to the documents folder because in the documents folder we can modify it and update it and execute a SQL statement on our database. So after we get the documents here, we're going to need to string them by a path component, database name. We finished with that function. Now we're going to add another function, which returns void, and it's called check and create database. This function, what it does, it checks if the database is in the application in the documents folder. And if it's not, it will copy it from the resources group to the documents folder. We're going to define a boolean variable and we need a file manager. This is the, the object we're going to use to access files. We're going to initialize the file manager by the default, uh, default manager. Success will hold if file exists at path database path, meaning if file exists at the documents folder. If success is true, then this function will do nothing, we'll just return. We will continue to the next line if our database is not located in the documents folder. For this, we'll need to copy it. So we're going to need to reference the resources group. So to reference the resources group, we're going to access the bundle, the main bundle, the resource, resource path, and for this we're going to append the database name. This will give us the resource path with the database name at the end, meaning the full path to our database that is located in the resource. After we did that, we can copy from the resource using the file manager, copy from the resource to our destination, that is the document folder.
OK, finished with this function. Now let's add the third one. The third one will basically interact with our database. It will be called read words from database. What it will do, it will loop through all the rows in the database and populate a single student object and push this object to our array. OK, we're going to start by basic initialization of the database. For this, we're going to use FM database, which get database with path, which get the path to the database. This, this initializes the database, our database variable. We're also going to need to initialize the array. We're going to add a few options for the database that will help us in the debugging process. Okay, now we're going to need to open the database. So we're going to use db open. It will return true if open successfully or false if failed to open. Then we'll check the return value of this function and check if it's true will return success and if it's false will return fail to open database and return from this function. Okay, now we're going to loop through uh, all the rows in the database. So we're going to need to define a result set object. We'll call it RS and we're going to need to to use the function execute query which gets an SQLite statement. We're going to use the segment statement select star from student. Select everything from the table named student. Student is the name of our, of our table. Now we're going to loop all through all the results by using while rs next. Before we do so, something I forgot, add an import of single student dot h. Turn back to the row we were. We're gonna loop through using while rs next. It will loop, loop through all the rows that was managed to capture from the last SQLite statement we used. And then, from each row, we're gonna use the end for column to retrieve a certain column from a result. Int for column will retrieve a column, uh, an integer column, while string from column will return us the string. So we need to use int for column for the ID and primary key, and string for column from the name. We're going to then initialize a single student object, initiate it with data, and send the three parameters we extracted from the database above. After that, we're going to need to push this object to, the, to our array. But something I forgot for the array, because it is to add synthesize for the array database. So add a synthesize for the array database. Also, I forgot one more thing, I'm sorry. In the database one application delegate dot h, I think I forgot that. Uh, yes, add a, add a star in the NS mutable array, it should be a star there. Now we can add an object, a student, and now we can release the object. Don't forget to close the database. Okay, pretty much finished with this function. And now we need to call them in the application did finish launch res option. So we're gonna call self update names, then self check and create database, and then self read words from database. Go to the dialog function, we need to free some memory, free the array, and also free the database. That's it for now. Please continue to the next part.